Hey, what's going on YouTube? My name is Lee Brandt. I'm a developer advocate at Okta. Today we're going to talk about upgrading your Angular project template to the latest version of Angular. So today is September 20th, 2018. Um, if you don't already have the .NET Core 2.1 SDK installed, you're going to want to install it. I'll put this uh, link down below in the description. But uh, here's where you go to download it and install it for whatever platform you're running. Now I happen to be running on Ubuntu. It's not going to make any difference. Once you have the SDK installed, all the rest of the commands we're going to be running are Angular CLI commands or NPM commands. So they're going to, they'll work just fine on whatever platform you're running. So September 20th, 2018, as of today, the latest, status, latest stable version of Angular is 6.1.8. So that's what we're going to try and get up to here. Um, if you already have the .NET SDK installed, and you've had it installed for a while, you may need to update your project templates just to get to. By default, if you've had it installed since like before July, I think you'll have uh, the project template uses Angular 4.5.2. Um, these projects get you to 5.2.0, uh, but once you have those installed, if you're installing the .NET Core 2.1 SDK today, you'll have already have the latest templates. So. One other thing you're going to want to have installed is this C Sharp extension for Visual Studio Code. I'm going to do all my coding in Visual Studio Code. Um, I love it, so um, make sure you have this extension installed because it's going to make one of the steps, especially, um, it's going to make that step a whole lot easier. So let's go ahead and get started. Once you have all this stuff installed, you should be able to pull up a command line and do a .NET new Angular app where the output folder is, we'll just call it .NET Angular Example. Okay. And it's going to go ahead and scaffold out a .NET Core project with an Angular app inside of it. So let's go ahead and change directories into there. And we'll run code from there. So once you open up Visual Studio Code, the first thing it's going to do is make sure it has all the C Sharp services it needs. And then it's going to ask you if you, that it's going to tell you that there's some required assets in order to build and debug this thing are missing. Do you want to add them? Click yes. That'll create a VS Code folder. Um, that C Sharp extension did that for you. So make sure you have that installed. Otherwise, you'll be writing your own VS Code files. Um, or you can just install it, close Visual Studio Code, and open it again. It'll say, hey, you don't have that folder. Do you want to create it? So if I take a look at the client app here and I look at my package.json, we'll see that Angular Core here is at 5.2.0. That's expected. Um, the Angular CLI is at 1.7.0, and we're going to need that upgraded. This Angular CLI 1.7.0 um, is the local version of the Angular CLI. Um, you might want to install the latest version of Angular CLI globally. Um, I have it installed, so if I do an npm list, uh, list the global stuff, and I only want to see the top level, so depth equals zero. I should see something like this, and I've got the Angular CLI 6.2.3 installed. Now, um, once I've got this thing scaffolded, and I'm going into here, what I'm going to want to do is cd into the client app folder, so that I can uh, upgrade this. Now the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to upgrade that Angular CLI, the local one. So let's do an npm install Angular CLI at 6.2.3. That's the one we want. Um, and then we're just going to save that back to our package.json. This will install that and it'll upgrade this version here. As we can see, when we hover over, it says the latest version is 6.2.3, um, and the current version that we have is somewhere around 1.7.0, so we definitely want to upgrade that. Okay, now that I have that upgraded, we can see here that my Angular CLI, the local one, is now at 6.2.3. And let's go ahead and clean this up a little bit and get back up to the top. Now what we're going to want to do is one of the things that changed from the Angular CLI 1.7.0 to 
to the latest version is this file right here. This Angular CLI.json file is no longer what the Angular CLI uses for its configuration. It now uses an angular.json or .angular.json file. So one of the things that we're going to want to do is we're going to want to get rid of this and move it over to the angular.json format. An easy way to do that is by using that Angular CLI and you do ng update at Angular CLI. We'll do a dash dash migrate only, migrate dash only. And we're going to do from, and the version that we had before was 1.7.0. And when I do that, we should see this file go away and a new angular.json file be created in its place. And it's upgrading some other things like the tslint.json, the package.json file, of course, um, the karma config, things like that. Am I the only one that hears uh, Culture Club whenever I say Karma Config? Anyway. So, <clears throat> now that we've got this guy upgraded, we want to upgrade all the other packages. All these 5.2.0, um, these Angular compiler CLIs and language services, we're going to want to upgrade those as well. So the way we can do that is just do an ng update. And it's easiest if we just pick one of those packages. I usually pick the Angular dash compiler slash compiler dash CLI. That's this package right here that's at 5.2.0. When I do that, it's actually going to upgrade all the rest of the things for me too because the Angular compiler CLI needs those other ones. So when I do that, you'll start seeing these all these things in here change to 6.1.8. There they go, all 6.1.8, all through all the places that we need them. Okay. Now, once you've upgraded to Angular 6.1.8, and actually the Angular CLI 6.2.3, um, one of the things that's going to be no longer available is up here in this uh, in your start script, this ng-serve has a, a switch on it that, switch, that turns on extract CSS. Um, this is no longer available. This is actually now in your angular.json file, so it's not needed here. And actually, it won't run with that. It'll tell you there's a problem. But let's go ahead and run this guy in Angular 6 and make sure that he's running. So we're just hitting regular old F5, and it'll make sure that our npm packages are up to date. Everything's good. Fire up our Angular or fire up our .NET Core app with Angular in it, and everything should work. Um, if you do get like a big error screen, look for it. It probably says, "I don't know what dash dash extract dash CSS is." That's make sure you go back to your npm, uh, your package.json, and the npm start script, and make sure you remove that that switch. So everything is still working on Angular 6. Now we've upgraded, so we got to where we wanted to be, but there's still one problem. Um, again, it's just me, but if you come over here and do an NPM audit, one of the things you'll see is that there are 37 vulnerabilities, 12 of them high vulnerabilities, and we definitely don't want that in our app. So let's go ahead and do an NPM audit fix. This should fix quite a few of them, and I think it actually it only fixes like 10 or 12 of them. Um, leaves us with about 27 or 28 still. At least it does for me. Um, so if I do another NPM audit, it should tell me that I've still got like 28 vulnerabilities, I believe. Yeah, still got 28 vulnerabilities. Eight of them are high vulnerabilities. Um, so if I do an NPM audit fix, it's probably not going to fix that because it says 27 of those vulnerabilities require a Simver major dependency update. So one of the things you can do to get past this, I'll just 
double check to make sure it didn't fix all those for us. Fixed a couple more, and you can go through this. But one of the things you can do to kind of shortcut this is npm audit fix dash dash force. Now, as with anything, anything ever command line, if you're doing a dash dash force, make sure you know what you're what you're signing up for. Because this dash dash force is going to force over things that might not normally update like they should. Um, as a matter of fact, it'll even tell you. Using force, I sure hope we know what you're doing. So this is going to actually upgrade all the other dependencies uh, and get rid of some of those security vulnerabilities. And if I come back up here one more time and do an npm audit, there should be still one more. There's one low severity in the prototype pollution, uh, a, a prototype pollution vulnerability in uh, Karma. So let's go ahead and fix that one just doing a regular NPM audit fix. And this is going to go ahead and update that low, low end package there, the Chakradar FS events node pre JIP RC package. And just to make sure that should have gotten rid of all of them, I'll do one more NPM audit. It should tell me my audit security report found zero vulnerabilities. We are safe and secure and ready to go build a, an Angular 6 app with .NET Core. Um, and just to make sure, I'm going to run it one more time to make sure none of those dependencies that I just updated with, especially since I did a dash dash force, <clears throat> none of the dependencies that I updated have made anything break. So if this runs, everything should be okay. And there's my app running, everything running as it should. All right. So now we've upgraded to Angular 6.1.8 and you are ready to rock and roll. Thanks for watching. Till next time, keep coding.